Well, Dave, Iowa handled Iowa State soundly here at Jack Trice Stadium a year ago to take a 22-11 to edge since the series was resumed back in 1977. So they've won two out of every three. However, of late, Iowa State has played pretty well. The Cyclones have won seven of the last 12. Before we look at today's game and look ahead at the series, let's look back at what's happened since 1977. The year is 1977, 43 years since the Cyclone Hawkeye football rivalry has last been played. Defense and key plays highlight this first game of the renewed series, like Iowa State's Tom Buck electrifying the crowd with a 63-yard punt return for the touchdown. But the Hawkeyes prevail 12-10. In 1978, a reserve steps into the limelight. Walter Grant comes off the Iowa State bench and fuels the Cyclones to 17 second-quarter points. And although this game was rated as a toss-up, it's all Iowa State, 31 to nothing. In 1979, Dennis Mosley writes his name on headlines across the state. Mosley alone cranks out 229 yards rushing and scores three touchdowns. In the end, Hayden Fry notches his first win against Donnie Duncan as Iowa waltzes to a 30 to 14 win. With Iowa taking two of the previous three meetings, Iowa State gets really fired up for the 1980 matchup. This game comes down to one crucial final play. Iowa trails by three late in the game with a fourth and seven situation deep in ISU territory. Hayden Fry opts for the win instead of a game-tying field goal, and George Jessen's defensive jam preserves a thrilling 10-7 victory for Iowa State. In 1981, the series moves to Ames for the first time since Prohibition. Dwayne Crutchfield dominates on the day, 147 yards rushing and a second-quarter touchdown. Coupled with Alex Gifford's three field goals, Iowa State emerges with a 23-13 win. In 1982, the addition of the Cy Hawk series proves to be Donnie Duncan's last. David Archer nails this 46-yard TD strike to Frankie Leakes. Plus, Alex Giffords does it again, booting four field goals as Iowa State wins again 19-7. In 1983, Jim Kreiner makes his debut as the Cyclones coach, but Iowa is more than ready for this one, scoring on four of its first five possessions. Owen Gill rushes for 136 yards and ties a school record with four touchdowns. Iowa blows away the Cyclones 51 to 10. Things don't get much better for Kreiner in 1984. This is the year that Iowa shuts out Michigan for the first time since 1929 and also wins the Freedom Bowl big over Texas. And they steamrolled Iowa State along the way, 59-21 the final. But the worst is yet to come for Kreiner and Iowa State. On September 28, 1985, Iowa rings up the most lopsided win in series history. Chuck Long and Mark Vlasic combined for 357 yards passing, Long with three touchdown passes. Iowa chalks up its third win in a row by walloping the Cyclones 57-3. 1986 brings the final meeting between Hayden Fry and Jim Kreiner. Coach Kreiner would never taste the thrill of victory over the Hawkeyes. Mark Vlasic passes for 286 yards and two touchdowns, while the Hawkeyes' defense holds Iowa State to minus 11 yards rushing on the day. It's four in a row for Iowa, 43-7 the final. In 1987, Cyclone fans have a glimmer of new hope. Jim Walden making his home debut. But this day doesn't belong to Walden. Rather, Kevin Harmon, who runs for 182 yards on 31 carries, including three touchdowns. Chuck Hartlieb emerges as a future star, connecting on 15 of 18 passes, Iowa wins again, 48-9. In 1988, the series would see a close game for the first time in a long time. Chuck Hartleaf hitting Tony Stewart for the only touchdown of the afternoon, and Tor Cook preserved Iowa's 10-3 victory with a late interception in the end zone. In 1989, the game was just the opposite, a high-scoring affair. Blaze Bryant scored two touchdowns to lead Iowa State to a 21-14 edge at halftime. But Iowa's defense came up big in the second half, Jim Johnson forcing the key fumble, Larry Blue recovers, and the Cyclones never did. 31-21, Iowa the final. 1990, another shootout. Freshman Bob Utter sparking Iowa State to 35 points. The Hawks come up with 10 more. Nick Bell leading the way in a 45-35 victory. On to 1991, and Hayden Fry reaches deep into his bag of tricks. Matt Rogers to Dana Hughes on the flea flicker. Iowa dominates from the outset, winning 29-10. In 1992, Hughes finds the end zone again, this time with Jim Hartlieb on the throwing end, and the Iowa defense would do the rest. 21-7 the final, 10 straight victories for the Hawks. In 1993, Iowa quarterback Paul Burmeister, with great protection, finally found Anthony Dean for the touchdown. 
Hawks building a 21-point lead. Iowa State did put together a big rally and had a chance to win it when Kevin Lazard recovered this late onside kick. But in the end, Iowa wins a thriller 31-28. The game returned to Iowa City in 1994, and the Hawks would show no mercy. Young stars emerged in Iowa's victory, namely quarterback Ryan Driscoll and freshman running back Tavian Banks. 37-9, the final, a dozen victories in a row for the Hawkeyes. In 1995, former Hawkeye player and assistant coach Dan McCarney enters the fray on the Iowa State side, and the Cyclones finally seem to have a chance. A 63-yard touchdown run by Troy Davis had ISU within four at the break. But Iowa's defense dominated the second half, and Matt Sherman's touchdown run put it away. 27-10 to 10 the final. The streak moved to 13. 1996, Iowa City, the 21st ranked Hawkeyes, rack up 301 rushing yards and four touchdowns on the ground. It's more of the same, all Hawks, 38-13. The streak reaches 14. In 1997, the series returns to Ames and this one gets really ugly for Iowa State. The 13th rated Hawkeyes got an early 89 yard touchdown run by Tavian Banks and the floodgates were officially open. The Iowa offense racked up eight touchdowns on the day, and the streak goes to 15 in convincing fashion, 63 to 20, the final. In 1998, Iowa was favored by four touchdowns at Kinnick Stadium, but the Cyclones finally broke through. Kevin Wilson's key blocked punt put momentum on Iowa State's side, and Darren Davis took it from there, rushing for 244 yards. A 27-9 Iowa State win in Hayden Fry's final game against the Cyclones. A year later, Iowa State started a streak of its own. Sage Rosenfels found Davian Gross for an 80-yard touchdown pass. Darren Davis had another big day, and the Cyclone defense dominated, holding Iowa to just 230 total yards. A 17-10 final made it too straight for Iowa State. The following year, it was back to Kinnick Stadium to start a new century in the Cyhawk rivalry. Dan McCartney had his best team at Iowa State, a 9-3 outfit that went on to win a bowl game for the first time in school history. Along the way, the Cyclone defense turned in another outstanding effort, and Sage Rosenfels sparked the offense in a 24-14 Iowa State victory, their third straight in the series. 2001 provided one of the most memorable games in the Cyhawk series. The game was originally scheduled for September 15th, but because of the events of 9-11, the matchup was rescheduled for the final week of the season. The late Ennis Haywood helped Iowa State to build a lead, but it was this wild play that helped to put the game away. Grant Steen intercepted Seneca Wallace late in the game, but Craig Campbell stripped the ball away from Steen Haywood recovered, and the Cyclones were on their way to a 17-14 win, their fourth straight over the Hawks. 2002, Kinnick Stadium, what turned out to be one of Iowa's all-time best teams, jumped all over Iowa State early, led by Heisman Trophy runner-up Brad Banks. Iowa led it 24-7 at the half. But Iowa State stormed back in the second half behind Seneca Wallace. A remarkable throw to Jack Whitford got Iowa State out of trouble. And that was just the start. Wallace threw for 361 yards, and the Cyclones rallied to post an incredible 36-31 win. It was the only regular season loss for the Hawkeyes, but their fifth straight loss to Dan McCarney and the Cyclones. In 2003, special teams helped put Iowa back on the winning track in Ames. Sean Considine blocked two Cyclone punts, and the Hawkeye defense limited Iowa State to just 243 yards. Iowa won big, 40 to 21, to regain the Cyhawk Trophy. Back to Iowa City in 2004, another hard-hitting, low-scoring battle between the two rivals. 16th-rated Iowa got a spectacular touchdown catch from Ed Hinkle to help the Hawkeyes jump out to a 17 to 3 lead. Iowa State pulled to within seven on a Todd Blythe touchdown reception, but the Iowa defense stiffened when it had to, and the Hawkeyes posted their second straight win in the series. 17 to 10, the final. 2005, Jack Trice Stadium. Iowa comes in ranked eighth in the nation, but it's Iowa State that dominates the game. The Cyclones forced five turnovers, including this pick six for LaMarcus Hicks. Tim Dobbins had a big game too, and McCarney got his final win against Iowa, a 23 to three final. But 2006 would prove to be McCarney's final season at Iowa State. And although his team jumped out to a 14 to 10 halftime lead at Kinnick Stadium, Drew Tate would lead the Hawkeyes back. 
Three touchdown passes on the day for Tate, and Iowa won it 27 to 17. In 2007, Gene Chizik took over at Iowa State, and after opening the era with home losses to Kent State and Northern Iowa, the Cyclones stunned the Hawkeyes at Jack Trice Stadium. Brett Myers' late pass to freshman Philip Bates set up Brett Culbertson for his school record tying fifth field goal of the game as time expired. The Cyclones didn't score a touchdown, but won it 15-13. In 2008, Iowa returned home to win another tight, low-scoring battle. Sean Green helped the Hawkeyes to a 10-3 lead, but the game was still in the balance in the fourth quarter when former Ankeny High School star Andy Brodell busted loose on an 81-yard punt return to put it away. Another outstanding performance from the Hawkeye defense and a 17-5 Iowa win. And in 2009, it was Iowa's defense again that was the difference. The Hawkeyes forced six turnovers, resulting in 28 points. Oskaloosa's Tyler Sash tying a school record with three interceptions. And freshman Brandon Weger led the Hawkeye ground game with 101 yards on just 15 carries. The Hawks won big 35-3. And after today's game, the Hawkeyes will return the trip back here to Jack Trice Stadium again next year. But the future of the series is somewhat up in the air because of the uncertainty about the restructuring of the Big Ten and Big 12 conferences. It seems, however, that both schools do want the rivalry to continue. Dave and Joey will send it back to you.